Spirit C1 is in the 3.21.1 EPTU. Let's talk about it. Now, the A1 and the C1 have a lot of similarities, aside from that tractor beam. You will note that these posts are there and that there's a ramp with a lighting system around it. The lighting system is there for safety and it looks cool. Gives you an idea of the ramp's drop area. Inside, you can see this expansive cargo bay. However, as I noted from the beginning, those posts at the front there are a double-edged sword. They block some of the larger vehicles from getting inside, even though the cargo bay is bigger once you get past the, those modules that are in those containers and those little posts. Uh, but uh, to fit through that doorway, only certain size things can get in. Uh, also, though, they protect you from sliding cargo, which you're going to see at the end of this video. Please jump ahead of the chapters if you're not going to stick around. At least watch that part. It's really cool to see a two-person operation. Uh, again, I want to thank Sterling for lending us the ship and playing alongside me. I had a great time playing tonight. Uh, good session. Um, and you can see here these suit lockers. So that there's two suit lockers in this, a lot like the other spirits. And then you have a double weapon locker as well. And then note there's sidearms or uh, I guess we could test to see if multi-tools will eventually work in there once that's all functional. I did test to try to put a multi-tool in there right now, but it seems like the, the weapon locker in general isn't working or it just doesn't accept multi-tools. <laughs> so there's two beds and inside here, the co-pilot seat in this vessel is the fun seat because it operates the tractor beam. And the tractor beam is a dual post tractor beam. What I mean by that is, as Mason and I foresaw in the past, it is designed to go to the back of the ship where it's situated in that shot. And then also above, on a, it goes along a rail where you can what's, you press the button and it goes deploy or retract, and then it can operate. V vehicles that do not have their shields up, such as this SRV, uh, are able to be moved. I did not know at the time you need alt and scroll wheel. So I always try to put all my cards on the table. I don't try to hide anything from you. But uh, just understand that it does function. Um, it is not as good. Not, in the future, it won't be as strong as an SRV, and you certainly won't be able to quantum in, in with 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 a ship and tractor beam or anything like that. But the tractor beam is actually really strong, and you're gonna see later in this video uh, a, a full size raft being manipulated uh, by that tractor beam. So you can see the deployment there on that little rail, and it, it's um it's a pretty aggressive position it sits in when it's on top, and then when it's in the back, it kind of it's more geared towards getting cargo in and out of that rear ramp, which is the whole vessel revolves around that ramp and the cargo bay. So it makes sense. Now those tails that are on the back of the ship on the top that I, I, kind, of, I kind of said negative things about in the A1 video, they're actually quite useful here. They kind of cordon the uh, cargo in between those rails and on the open ramp. Between the two of them, it, they actually work a little, pretty reasonably well. Uh, you can note that you can have a bathroom here where the stuff can be put away, such as the toilet, etc., etc. And um, once again, it helps create like a cleaner, but more professional atmosphere. If, if uh, I always like when they have those retractable systems, and then of course it has a door. There's a coffee machine there, an espresso machine, I think it says, uh, and but does not function at this time. And then there's a fridge that does work, but nothing's in it. Uh, hopefully for the release on the live. Remember, this, is, this isn't even PTU yet. It's EPTU. But um, hopefully on live, when it finally comes out, the Redeemer got free drinks inside its little working fridge. Hopefully this gets the same thing. You can note that the modules are easy access. That's important, especially on a multi-crew vessel. Uh, in, in general, a small vessel like this, uh, having close access like the other spirits have uh, to your modules is very useful. It is in it is one doorway away from the pilot's area, so if you do have all your doors closed, it, you may uh, wait to hear a status issue. Um, it, it might be interesting to note that if you block the door open when that's possible, uh, it would be nice to have that open uh, so you can maybe see something smoking or hear a noise better uh, once the doors uh, have more sounding. Uh, it, it, but it's still, it's interesting. Now, we do three missions here. I skipped ahead to the second one because I want to show you this raft because this really impressed me on how this operates. This is the first time I'm actually getting a hold of the tractor beam and using it where it's... Um, the cargo is able to be brought in clearly. The first mission, unfortunately, didn't have cargo, so I skipped it. 
Now on this one, you can note that it, you can slide it right up the ramp and the tractor beam is really, I'll be honest with you, it's slightly awkward uh, the way it is. On the Zeus, I think this is one of the reasons that they added that like arm that's articulating. This is not an articulating, it locks in place on the top or the bottom. So it's, it's not a bad thing, it's just I wanted you to note that, that uh, the, it is what it is. You have two positions to choose from. You can't stop it midway or anything like that. Um, it actually, like, when you deploy it, it kind of, like, locks in to go out. And you can, if you're already in the camera, you can watch it do it. But if you aren't in the camera, it won't let you. And I wanted to note that when you have a second player, it helps. Because you can set it from the ship tractor beam. But the other player is risking their, their, uh, their safety. Because you're sliding these big, heavy objects in. And at any time, I mean, you might accidentally hit your 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 buddy there. So just be mindful of that. That uh, other crewmates may be impacted. Uh, so be safe. Do do it very slowly. Guide it up. Use the ramp whenever possible. And then you'll notice on the larger ones here, you kind of need some help to kind of get them in from a hand tractor beam, if possible. And by the way, the two hand tractor beam is in the EPTU, but it's not functional yet. So. Um, Pretty interesting stuff. I didn't get, I didn't get see it myself. I just, I heard it from multiple people, so I'm assuming that's correct. But uh, yeah, just be mindful of safety when you're using the C1. Whether you're using the multi-tool tractor beam or very soon the two-handed tractor beam, which is even stronger, I think that might be a gooder, uh, that might be a better, <laughs> might be a better option to work with when you're on the C1 because the ship tractor beam is just so strong and, and very powerful. It can kind of yank things around pretty easily of any size, whereas the hand tractor beam really lets you know something's big and powerful and it takes a little more effort to move it around. Um, note that you can block in your door uh, to the front and also some of the module access uh, can be uh, difficult uh, if you're fiddling around with too much cargo. So if you like overload this thing past the, past the in, inner gate area there and um, you're trying to make it work outside of the cargo grid with something, say a vehicle or something else, um, you, you can block yourself in pretty easily, especially if you have containers slapped on top of the start moving around near the vehicle. But the, the grid does function. You can see this moving the raft, no problem. Uh, it is an NPC broken raft, but still, I mean, look at the mass on that thing. Now note, as it gets further and further away, you it's like a cliff of power drop off. And I don't, they might tweak this, but do note that when it, the, the amount of power you have when you get, when it's further away is extremely weak. So you, you keep trying to bring it faster and faster towards you. And then it kind of has this inertia you have to fight against. The energy of the tractor beam is not infinite. So even though it's stronger than a handheld, do be mindful. You can absolutely slam something into somebody. And then if you have players that are EVAing with, say, hand tractor beams trying to help out and make speed things up, uh, be mindful of their position at all times. Don't trust the pip. Sometimes the server has a low FPS, sometimes it's lagging, sometimes the party system's just acting a little strange, or just an update for that second. Uh, visual, visually indicate with your own eyes who where the other players are, if at all possible. But yeah, it's a pretty powerful system, and I, I think the uh, the C1 has a place. I think it's a it's it really stands out. Um, it's basically an A1 with with um, with a tractor beam instead of a turret. And it still has the chin guns so and, and, and the retractable systems on board. So I do want to note that it's not, yes, it doesn't have bombs, etc. But the C-1 is a very interesting ship and it has a multitude of different capabilities it can do. And it absolutely can help serve uh, in the military capacity in the sense of being able to bring vehicles or cargo. This cargo is going to be very important. Delivering an outpost uh, gear, such as repair equipment for a fighter they, that they use to defend the place, or um, extra extra ballista missiles and stuff like that, is going to be critical. Not even going into the normal stuff. I mean, it's just, I, I stress that uh, when people talk about uh, military equipment and combat and stuff, they forget about the logistical nature, especially when you're further away from the Stanton area, where it's extremely short ranges to get to all sorts of services and a full markets full of weaponry and equipment and ammunition and all sorts of medical supplies all sorts of stuff that you're going to desperately need day to day and then also in a a hostile situation so this type of ship 
any ship that has strong utility is going to shine in those places, especially in Atmo. I keep bringing up Outpost with this ship because that's what it's strong at. It's the Atmo King. It has those huge wings and it doesn't have a very good, uh, it's a pretty high uh, signature, like all the spirits, uh, but it benefits from its atmospheric capabilities. And especially on a ship that is designed to bring cargo, you want as much, you want as much efficiency as possible. You'll note that those little wings that I talked about nearly, it's just saved me from getting hit by that thing. It's one of the things about double-edged sword. There it goes sliding by. And um, this is me showing you that basically using the hand tractor beam in order to gently, gently move it across the room uh, to uh, get back. This is a little bit of spare stuff. So that's the C1 in a nutshell. I wanted to show some of these new signage that is showing up. Uh, so if you haven't heard already, IAE will be at the Tobin Expo Center, which is at New Babbage. I highly recommend choosing New Babbage as your starting location for future patches. And so, uh, the signage is really cool. I think it's uh, pretty unique. New Babbage was never a difficult place to navigate, but it certainly helps. And it's in a lot of different places. I like the update, the signage, and then the brand new signage in some places. It's a nice touch. But it's a little bit, uh, some of the hints here of the lighting. It seems like they had a lighting pass done in the commons. And um, it's a little bit different. Uh, it feels like some of the elements of pyro were mixed in, dare I say it, maybe for the snow. I don't know for certain, so I'm not going to say it for certain. Uh, but um, it feels like when I'm looking outside the stations of pyro, but instead of micro uh, fod, like a like material that I have to worry about hitting my ship and such and the shield, lighting the shields up, um, it looks more like snow and other material. This is a uh, Citizens for Pyro exhibit, and that's actually a photo that I'm going to show. But um, <laughs> I don't feel it's a leak or anything. I think it's just... It's just a low resolution on by accident. You know, it wasn't a resolutioned up. Um, it certainly is there. It's sitting there, and there's some neat uh, space plants and such. But these are advocates for pyro. I don't know what their deal is yet. Um, I'm excited to find out more. I love these little organizations and groups that are in, that are based in the uh, the lore. Hopefully, they'll they'll make it a richer game and a richer verse for us to enjoy. Uh, so this is the Tobin Expo Center's convention hall transit stop which is open on the eptu and when you go upstairs you can see a high resolution shot there and you can see the colors you know you're starting to see the purple and the white it seems like this year is pretty strong in this year it's a shame it's not purple and gold or yellow uh they tend to go to bed go go well together but purple and, purple and white i'm sure will look great so uh, you can see that they have some of the NPCs populate in the place, the usual uh, manufacturer shirts, and of course the IAE shirts. If you've been to, Fle if this is your first IAE, it's a lot like Fleet Week if you read Invicus, but bo both of the time it goes in. Uh, these lobbies go in first, and as you can see, there's no, uh, <laughs> there's no uh, halls. I can dream, <laughs> but uh, basically they lock them out until the last moment, and then they flip them on. Uh, some years, uh, multiple times a year, I should say, there is PTUs when possible that uh, have early access to the to the halls. So if you'd like to check out most things, they'll be in there. Sometimes they save a surprise or two for the live server, but when possible, most of the content is in those PTU patches. So be sure to check them out if you'd like. It's actually a pretty cool time to check out different people's experiences and meet new friends, etc. People that if you're into exploration and into uh, really diving deep into the new content, that's where you'll find them during those time periods. So there's some placeholders here. I thought it was kind of interesting that there's on the other side of the hall, there seems to be more signage. And I kind of got tripped up here because on that side of the hall, they had like placeholders except for the Crusader logo. You can see that nice little Fury LX. Uh, once again, high resolution poster. And you see the whole C poster here. But inside over there, I just happen to notice that there's a lot of signage that's just very, very strong. You know, it's, it's, a, it's full manufacturers and such. And the biggest one that stood out to me was actually the Argo one. I'm going to walk up to in a moment. And um, I'm not quite sure if that means anything. Although the Argo SRV that I'm, I just talked about in a video recently, also in the cards if you want to see at the end. Uh, but uh, 
I just noticed that that Argo sign is just so, so, like, uh, overbuilt. I don't know if I've seen this ever before at a major event. So I just thought that was a nice touch, and I thought that was maybe telling for something, and then I remembered afterwards, that because I shot this before I did the SRV video, that yes, the SRV's coming. <laughs> so that makes sense. So yeah, that's uh, some of my thoughts on the Tobin Expo Center, and in general, it's um, it's a good time. Make your way out, have a have, have those experiences, and um, I know sometimes people think it's not their cup of tea, but uh, in general, let's see the replacement ball. I don't think it's an EPTU or a PTU without seeing at least one of those. As a reminder, there are works in progress, as the even the test version information disclaimer at the bottom says. But yeah, the expo halls in general, if this is your first year, they're great events. They usually have a daily schedule. So each manufacturer or multiple manufacturers, if they don't have a lot to show, like for example, Tumbrel might get a day mixed in with Grey Cat, you know, and that's kind of the deal. You can see more signage here on the garage on Commons. And the schedule will be up way ahead of time. So if you're interested, you can hit Tobin. And it's in the loop. So you can literally leave the Habs and there will be signage guaranteed to show you. Like you saw in this video, telling you right where to go to IE. From the spaceport or from the Habs. I broke out the Anvil Spartan. I just threw this into the video because I, I kind of figured it doesn't, it doesn't need its own video just to show this. And plus it's IAE themed. So it could be kind of a shame not to use this before IAE which is only going to be in a couple weeks. But um, if you notice, the Spartan specifically would probably be a good trailer option until you think about the fact that it has a huge ramp on the back. So it's a shame. This is I, I have an Anvil Spartan mainly for PTU work uh, to be able to test new ships, and this is my large uh, vehicle tester. I figured it's the most standardized. It may not have as much gear on the back as a ballista or be as um, profiled as a Centurion with with its weapon plat with turret. But I figured this is probably the most fair choice to be able to say, can a ship fit a large vehicle or not? If it can clearly fit a Spartan, it can most likely fit the other ones. That's my thought. And then obviously note, you note the giant IAE stack uh, up in the sky there. Uh, you don't usually see that other than when you're coming in on a, when you're flying into the spaceport to come to IAE or if you're coming in uh, on the train coming from the space border from the Habs to go to IAE, you'll be able to look up and see that beautiful IAE logo, especially at night, it looks really cool. You can actually fly over there and park on the roof. At least I did two years ago, I think it was. I took a Reliant Mako over there, the news van <laughs> ship and uh, landed right there and did a little bit of a lore post from there <laughs> about IAE's history. Because uh, this is something that a lot of people don't realize, but IAE is not actually from Stanton. This is kind of like a traveling roadshow version of IAE. And I'm paraphrasing that because um, I, I don't want to make this a super long video. I know you didn't sign in for lore, but I figured I'd mention that, especially when it's relevant. And uh, a little bit of exploration content never hurt anybody. So you can see I checked this gate, you know, checking a few different things and uh, seeing if I can get over to the IAE by vehicle. I think that would be a nice touch in the future is if there's actually a drivable space and then a garage at the base of the IAE towers uh, for vehicles to come up, ground vehicles. And um, I feel like that's going to kind of develop over time. It's kind of a shame you have to go all the way over to the spaceport, land your vessel, or come out of the Habs, and that's the only options you have to come to IAE, which is supposed to be a huge event, which is a whole server stacking up to get to. Um, it, w it would be kind of cool if you could bring a ground vehicle over, and um, I feel like, in general, New Babbage should be more ground vehicle friendly, if at all possible. It would be nice to see, especially as we get more uh, habitats online in the future, uh, it becomes more and more relevant. You see the Spartan climbing like it can, because it's a Spartan. You got that six-wheeled vehicle. You don't have a lot of weight on the load on the back. It can really just power through. And uh, it's pretty dang good at it. A lot of the scene lighting it has on the sides and the frontal lighting, it's really nice. And um, yeah, so I'm not quite sure. Will this be a towable vehicle um, that we see at IAE as the MC, as the mobile construction vehicle rumor? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think that if they do a, a Atlas 
platform chassis uh, vehicle, I don't think the Spartan would be included unless you just accept that the ramp on the back would just break off if you like tried to activate the ramp with the trailer on the back. I think that they, it's a shame because this would be the perfect, perfect vehicle for that. With all those seats in the back, a nice little turret but nothing overkill to be able to work with the, uh, with, to, with the system. That's all I got. Uh, let, let me know some comments. This was an experimental one where I just kind of bolted on a lot of the IAE hype onto the end and talking about some of the progress and things that are happening that are quickly going to find their way to the PTU. Uh, right now, the EPTU is in wave one as of recording and subscribers and um, Evo folks and uh, I think some of the more ardent testers and such. But uh, I'm sure it will come down to the other waves very, very quickly. And uh, once again, let me know what you think uh, about the format especially. And thank you to my long-term subscribers for sticking around. Y'all have a great day.